Hello. How is everybody today? Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. Hi, Katia. Can y'all hear me? Great. Can you see me? That's the important thing. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm a little muffled today. I got a head cold. Yeah, summer head colds. They're no fun. You just don't get rid of them. That was one of the treats in the treat bag from Palmetto's. Just my husband and myself got it. That's it. Sue, did you get my email this morning about those two document files? Hi, Teresa. Awesome. All right, we're going to lag a little bit. I've got to change the bit rate. Give me just a second. Try that. not know why the bit rate is running so slow. Is it breaking up on y'all's end? Oh, okay. Thank you, Sue. It's been a while since I've used this program, so I'm having to refresh my memory on what I need to do. And for some reason, I'm having a brain fart. I don't know why. We're using Starlink, and I've got a tree limb that every time the wind blows, it plays with the connection. I mean, it's very temperamental. I will not lie. This is our second starlink dish the first one we used it for about a week and we moved the rig and then it just didn't work anymore and come to find out the router messed up i 
do not know how to change this. Ah, now we've got a good screen. Don't ask me what happened. I didn't change anything. I'm still trying to figure out how. So, that said. Hey, Tom. Hi, Joanne. Who did I miss? <laughs> if I start coughing, don't think I'm dying. It's just this stupid head cold. Plus, we're sitting right underneath a pine tree, and I'm highly allergic to pine. And this thing's spitting out pine needles and pine cones like it's, you know, cooking supper with them or something for a bunch. Uh, they've been picking them up, and they've got a big batch of pine cones set over there. I don't know what they're going to do with them, but they've got enough pine cones set out here that they could probably decorate another hundred trees. So, yeah, I mean, they're coming down like crazy. And they don't usually come down this early. So, yeah. It's a strange year for the weather and nature. That's for sure. So y'all excited for this class today? Hey, Jeremy. Y'all missed a really good tat days. Um, Georgia was there. Richard was there. Our, uh, hi, Esther. Uh, many of our Canadian tatters got to come out. And the border's open. So, anybody going to Fringe this year, you got a thorough passage. So, that is awesome. Yeah, Maria, it is nice to be back. We've got the three special classes this week. Then, the regular class schedule will resume. I'm thinking it is the 13th of September. Isn't that right, Sue? Yeah, it's the week after... Labor Day weekend, it's best if we wait until after Labor Day weekend. That way the kids are back in school, parents are settled in with the new routines and such. So that's why we always wait till after Labor Day weekend. Uh, and then we will run six-week increments, off two, six weeks, off two. And the way that that works out is it puts us off at Thanksgiving, Christmas, all the major holidays. So we don't have to schedule them in, you know? And we run until the springtime for spring break. And then we come back from spring break and we run six more weeks and then we take the summer off. So, hopefully this year, God willing and the creeks don't rise as Georgia used to say. Um, everything holds true and we can keep the classes on a regular schedule. We've got the rig put together, but... We're trading it off in January. I'm not liking the toy hauler. I sit back here, I feel like I'm in a dungeon. It's too dark. All my windows are covered. So, I feel like I'm in a dungeon. And the patio doors back here, we found very few campsites with a rig this big. Have enough space to let that back end down for the patio. So, it stays closed up. I have beautiful patio doors to a patio that I can never use. And I told him, I said, if I had the windows there, I would be happy. So we're looking at another rig. And he's been talking to the dealership. And um, they're going to make us a really nice deal on this one. So... We're looking at that, but it's going to be a matter of take it from this rig and put it in the other one. Because the other one I'm looking at has got a second bedroom, basically. So, that'll be my room. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. 
but it has atrium sized windows throughout and it has an actual place to sit down and eat dinner on this one because it's a toy hauler there's no kitchenette so there's no place to sit down at the table and chow out with supper so i miss that and this one has a dinette and uh, here we bought a coffee table you put the lid up and you know make a dining table you know how many times I've run into it. I carry a lot of bruises. <laughs> As you can see, I got plenty. I, it's a new tan I'm working on. It's speckled. Anyway, so how about we get started on today so that we can all learn how to decoupage and decorate our shuttles. Most of us have plastic shuttles. See? They're boring. We use them. We pull them out. Some of them we find we like them, but they just don't have the pizzazz. And we want pizzazz. We have the clover bobbin shuttle. So I took the bobbin out. Don't need it in here if we're going to decoupage. Okay? So we've got the, yeah, they work great. I love them, but eh. So what we do is we decorate our shuttles. Now, I am going to do the down shot. I'm going to show you some shuttles that I have decorated with various things over the years. Okay, just to give it a little zing. But I will say this. The best ones I've covered are the ones in fabric. The reason is when you work with plastic shuttles, especially in the winter, your skin gets dry, your shuttles will fly. Okay, you lose your grip on it. Well, the fabric gives you a grip. Plus, it's pretty. And you can cover it in whatever kind of fabric you want. Um, at Walmart, Joann's, they have the pre-cuts. And the little 4 by 4s what is it? 2x2s, uh, two small cuts, the ones that are like this long and this wide. I'm not a quilter, so I don't know what they're called, okay? But... You can get a variety pack with those in it and do a lot of shuttles for like $6, okay? If you want to go into this for a business, there is a lot of people that will pay you to decoupage their shuttles. This is no joke. Uh, another thing you can use is napkins. Today, I'm going to show you how to take the napkin apart so you get the opaque look with the napkin, okay? So, let's head down to the desktop, and then we can get started on this deal. All right, here we go. As you can see, i got them all lined up here. All right, and I'm going to explain all these. This one here is one that is some Japanese fabric that I have. As you can see, it's got a rough-looking texture. Well, it's not really rough. It's smooth, but it's got a grip. So when you're tatting with it, it's not going to come out of your hands. Okay? On this one, we have paper. This paper is magazine paper. Okay? And you'll see pretty pictures in a magazine, you know? And you say, ooh, I like that print. Cut it out. It will fit on your shuttles. And this is decoupaged. This, now this is unique. This has a, this is something I just threw together. I know you've seen those uh, nail paints that are, they come in a pack and you just stick them on your fingernails. Well, I seen some that had some little bluebirds and flowers. And then I had these little stickers here. And I thought, well, how cute would that be to put that on there and then have the flowers like they're blowing in the wind? Well, guess what I did? I created texture. Also, this is a neutered moonlight, okay? Um, something happened to the hook. It got messed up, and I just went snip and neutered it. But it needed some pizzazz, and, and I stuck stickers on it and... The little nail thing and I mean 50 cents you know this here is a napkin 
that I have peeled back and notch podged it on. You see? This one here is another one done in fabric. And on this side is one of those kids tattoos. You know, you take them and you stick them on your skin. That's what this is. Okay? And you can go back over it with the sealer that I'm going to show you. And it will cover it. All right, this one here is another one that I got magazine paper. But on the back side, you see glitter. This isn't cheap nail polish from Dollar Tree. I mean, a buck, and we got glitter nail polish, okay? And it gives it a little detail and texture. This here is nail polish. And with the nail polish, all you have to do is paint it till you get the color you want. And remember... If you're painting a colored shuttle, whatever your nail polish is that's going on the first couple of coats, it's not going to look like what's in the bottle because the color of the shuttle is going to bleed through. Okay, so it takes a little more nail polish than it does anything else. But for a dollar, what is it now? A dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree? You're not losing nothing. You can use the whole bottle and make you ten shuttles. You know what I'm saying? So. That is just a few of the things that I have done with Mod Podge nail polish, uh, paint. You can use any kind of paint. I know that there are videos out for a new technique that is called water polish. And you put your nail polishes in uh, a little cup of water and you stir them with a toothpick. And you come up with these weird designs and stick your finger in it. And it comes up on your fingernails. Now, of course, it's all over your hands and stuff, I'm sure. But the thing of it is, is the neat designs that it has. Okay? You could do that with these shuttles. And it will not only paint what's on the outside, but it will paint what's on the inside. So make sure if you do that, you open this hole again where your thread goes through. All right? <coughs> <coughs> You have to excuse me. This head cold's getting the better of me. I haven't had one in, gosh, 40 years, 30, 40 years. This is my first, and I had to bring it back with me. You know, I just do everything in time. So, now, this is one that I was doing yesterday to demo, and I got it up to the point that I wanted to show you. This had a piece of fabric laid all the way across it. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've got it trimmed up to here on this shuttle. Well, I am going to do the same thing. Let's do it on this blue shuttle. All right. And this is fabric. I know y'all have seen the bags that I make that have the tatting on it, the print. Well, that is what this is, a scrap of that. And as you can see, it takes very little. All right. Now. To do this technique with Mod Podge, you are going to need emery boards. Now, if you've never decoupaged anything before in your life, this is the same technique you will use if you're decoupaging a piece of furniture, decoupaging a wooden box, um, a paper box. Anything you're going to decoupage, you do the same technique because you have to. It's a given. You can't get around it. But you have to sand it. Now, larger pieces you want to sand using a wood uh, sanding block. They're little sanding blocks like this, about this wide, that long, that thick. And each side is a different um, grit weight. Okay? But for this, emery boards. All right? See how it's shiny? You want to rough it up. You just take it and you just scratch the tar out of that shuttle. You want to take the shine off. All right. You don't want it. See how it's glittery? You don't want that. You want it to not shine. So you take your emery board and you just scrape it up. If you're doing this on a piece of furniture, use your sandpaper. Scrape it up. What that does is give this whatever you're going to put on it a bite, okay? Without the bite, you're not going to get anything to hold on it. It's going to 
you know, they work. Big enough, you can hold them in your hand, you know, and get something done. So, after you do that, it looks like our bit rate's dropping again. Tree must have moved, which is aggravating. I asked for one out in the open, and they didn't have one. It's, something's going on here in the town that we're in, so getting the space that we wanted you know, doesn't always happen but it's all good we're still recording it'll lag some just watch the funny pictures of what I'm doing and how I sound and enjoy it life's good that way you can have a few good laughs alright if you see a shiny spot go back scuff it up some more these black ones I really like because they've got a really rougher texture to them. I think they're coarser, I'm not sure. But they really, really work. And these moonlights, they've got this moon and everything on here. Now this is going to show through whatever you put on here. Okay? So, after we do the scruffing, the overall scruffing. Now y'all going to think I'm fun. You see these? These are my go-to wipes when I'm working with any type of glue. Reason being, it will cut through the glue, clean your hands, and it's got aloe in it so it doesn't dry your skin. I have eczema, and these are the only wipes I can use on my hands. And it doesn't break my hands out. So, Take that and run it across the top of your shovel. Get all that dust and dirt off. All right. Hi, Harla. Hey, Kaylin. All right. Now, once you do that, sit that to the side. Let it dry real good. Now, we go through our little box of goodies and you say, what do I want to do? We have a sticker book. If you're a paper crafter, Sticker books are your friend, okay? And in the sticker book, you've got all kinds of little stickers you can use on your shuttle, okay? You can put anything you want on it. You can use a sticker book. You've got this one I got at, uh, Tuesday, what is it, Tuesday morning, and it was like 50 cents, and it's got all kinds of cute little things in here. Or if I open the right way, we'll see the cute little things. There we go. We've got some wallpaper in here and stickers and such. All right. And then I got this out of a book or something. I'm not sure. I've used several of them. You can use those. This is from Dollar Tree. Know the name. It's Jot. Okay. Anything that says Jot is Dollar Tree. Then we have fabrics. There's the fabric that I used on that first shuttle. Okay, and it's just fabric scraps. All right. These scraps come from the bags that I make, and I have bags of scraps. Okay, I give bags of scraps away. And I kept these back, and I thought, well, I can do these for the decoupage class. Then we have napkins. I got a pack of these napkins, Dollar Tree. I think there was 20 of them in a bag for a dollar, maybe more. Here's some more that I got. This one. And I will show you how to take these apart. This one, you can open them up. I realize the peacock's not going to fit on there, but there are other things in this that will. Okay? You open it up, you look at it, and you picture what do you want to go on that shuttle. You see? And it you just pick out what you're wanting to go on there. Here's one that's got a variety of designs on it that you could put on that shuttle. Butterfly, birds, flowers, stamps, you know. And you just go through them and you pick out which one you want on your shuttle. Here's another one. I love this. Then we have this. See, there's a butterfly, here's some flowers, here's a stamp. Just different things you can use. 
All right, now, wrapping paper. Yes, we can use wrapping paper. You get wrapping paper at the Dollar Tree when you buy glass stuff. And this is what it looks like. Just cut you a little piece off, glue it on there, and you're ready to go. Didn't cost you anything. Came with what you bought earlier. So it's very reasonably priced to do this. And like I said, you can make these. Um, who is it? The Lacoste shuttles. That's exactly what she does. Now, the shuttles she makes, they're wood. I believe. I've not bought one of hers. I think they're pretty, but they're a bobbin shuttle, and they use a different type of bobbin than the clovers, and after about 10 times, the bobbins wear out, so you have to buy new bobbins all the time, so I just never have bought one, but Coin Small, that's what it is. She makes those shuttles, and all of them are decoupaged, okay, and they're beautiful, and she's making a mint off of them, all right? The shells probably cost her $10 to make, and then she decoupages them and charge like $30 plus shipping. So there you go. You see how that can add up. So if you're looking for extra income, especially with the economy the way it is, do so. Get in there and make you some decoupage shuttles. Now, this next one, I think we're going to do, I like this napkin. We're going to do this. We're going to put the napkin on. Lay all this stuff in here and get it out of the way. So there's what we're going to do. And I'm thinking, probably put that butterfly on there. That's what I'm thinking. Now, Mod Podge is your friend. Okay? With the Mod Podge, it comes in several different styles. Gloss, high gloss, matte, flat. I mean, if I was your oyster here, it doesn't matter what you use because the end result is whatever varnish you put on it. If you get the high gloss Mod Podge, great. You got high gloss Mod Podge. But if you put a matte varnish on that high gloss, it's going to be matte, not high gloss. Remember that. If you buy high gloss Mod Podge and you put high gloss varnish on it, man, it is going to shine like a brand new penny. Okay? Seriously. Now, the varnish, you can get this. I bought this at Dollar Tree, and it's in their craft department. Uh, your larger Dollar Trees that have the actual huge craft section has this. I don't know about the smaller branches, but the big box store Dollar Trees, they do have it. This is what you want to get, and it comes in all three flavors. Gloss, matte, and satin. All right? Or you can get this at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at Walmart. So there's various places you can get it. It is the best varnish because it's the only varnish you can use indoors, and you don't have to be ventilated. People that have breathing problems can use this. My mom used it all the time, and she was on oxygen. So, yeah, anybody can use it. The other varnishes you buy, no, you can't use them indoors. They will take your breath away and make you wish you had oxygen. All right? So, there you go. This is what you got to have, the good stuff. And you get it all at the Dollar Tree. It, I'm a crafter that crafts on the dime, Okay? And I want what works for the best price. And I like to get more bang for my buck than what's due me because I do a lot of crafting. So I like to get lots of goodies, okay? Next thing I bought, if you're going to do this professionally, okay, and make a hobby out of it or a business out of it, these are called silicone brushes. I don't care what kind of glue, resin, whatever you put on them, it comes right off. Yes, they're yellowed because they're aged, but it's silicone. It may age, but it doesn't break down like plastic. All right? 
You're not going to eat with them, so you don't have to worry about toxic chemicals and stuff. This mat that I'm working on is a silicone mat. I got four of these. I think it was $10.99, and I've had these things forever. I paint with them. I glue with them. I varnish with them. And as you can see, there's no residue. They wash up with soap and water. If it's resin you're working with, you tip, uh, sit there, let it dry, pop the resin off. It's done. Okay? So, best investment I have ever made. All right, the next thing you'll need is scissors. You'll need a set of close-cutting scissors. If you're going to cut fabric, you need fabric scissors. If you're going to cut paper, you need paper scissors. Never cut fabric with paper scissors. Never cut paper with fabric scissors. Because what you just did was wring them both, if you do. If I use my fabric scissors to cut paper, they're no longer good for my fabric. That's why we have a label. My husband comes in my craft room and I say, touch my scissors, dead man. That's all I got to say. And he turns around and he's got his own little scissors. He goes, hunts them. These are paper cutting scissors. Okay. If, they, if I use these for paper, I'm not going to touch my fabric with it because it ain't going to cut fabric. These things are not going to cut any, any kind of fabric. I don't care how lightweight it is. It's just going to chomp on them. That's it. Close cutting scissors. What I mean by close cutting, and I'm going to get these up here so you all can see the tips. Can you see the tip on that? They're angled inward. These are fine cut scissors. Now you can use these to cut your tatting thread with, but they're awfully long, as you can see in my hand. Let me get it in here. They're awfully long to be carrying around in a tatting bag, okay? But it does come with a cover. These are called bumblebees, and I got them on Amazon, and I got news for you. Best scissors I have ever bought, to be honest with you, because I don't care how close I need to get it, it doesn't. So, if you want to invest, do so. They're about $23 a pair, but they are well worth the dollar, okay? So, let's get on with this fun stuff. We're going to put our scissors out of the way, and what we're going to do is we're going to mod podge on this shuttle top that I have sanded. You see how it's scuffed? Can you see? See how it's scuffed up? It's still got a little gloss to it, but it ain't like that side. See? We're scuffy, scratched up. Now, we want to take this napkin. Now, I don't know if y'all know this. A lot of people don't. But napkins come in two-ply, three-ply, and four-ply. And your the more plies that a napkin comes in, the harder it is to separate the plies. So you take a piece of scotch tape, okay, one on one side, one on the other, and pull, all right, and they come apart. But what you want to do is separate the two plies of the napkin, okay? Now this, this part here is great for cleaning up messes, okay? I save it when I'm working with glue because it does clean up messes because I spill everything because Murphy lives with me, you know, he's one of my best friends. At least he thinks he is, till I evict him again. Okay, so, can you see how this is opaque now? That you can see through the napkin? Now, when we put our glue on it, it is really going to be opaque. You're going to really be able to see through it. Now, the part I want is this butterfly. And I want that butterfly to sit on the widest part of that shuttle. Let me see. Do we want him to go that way or that way? <coughs> Excuse me. How about like that? Yeah. So, we're going to cut it out just like so. All right, we got it. Now we move that out of the way. 
and we're going to open our Mod Podge. All right. Once you open the Mod Podge, you want to stir it up, you know, stir from the bottom. I don't have to because I have a mixer on board. It's called We Drive Our Home Down the Road, and it shakes everything up. So we don't need to mix things. They're pretty well mixed when we park. Seriously, they are. Anyway, you want to take your brush. You want to put it on your shuttle, just like this. Can you see what I'm doing? And just, you're laying that glue right down on that shuttle. You see how thick it is? I'm not smearing it. Okay, the reason I'm not is I want that to soak into that napkin because it's going to hold that napkin into place. If you get glue on your hands, that's part of the fun. Don't worry about it. Now, take our napkin and lay it on there. There we go. Pull it wherever you want it to go. And take your finger and lay it down. Okay? Now, right now, it's going to look a little weird. Because you can see through the napkin, the glue. I've got a no -seam and I see him. And he's flying around. You'd think I'd kill them all today. No. Okay. You can see the blue shuttle through the background. Okay? So, oh, you hear the thunder? I'm sure my dogs did. Yeah, we got storms moving in. They come in every night about the same time. No, I'm not in Florida. You would expect it in Florida. We will be in Florida in a couple of weeks. So, And then we're headed to Texas. Husband's got in RVT school, and uh, he's going to do that. And while he's doing that, I'm going to work on some stuff on the rig and go from there. All right, now, you see what I'm doing with this? I'm going back over this with the glue. I'm not smearing it because if you start smearing this, you're going to tear your paper. You don't want to tear the paper. You will see why I use a silicone mat. You see how easy that is to clean up? Now I can let that dry, put it in the sink, run water over it. It's done. I have got ink on here. When I was, you know, aging something and washed it right up. This stuff, it just, it works. Okay, now. I have a heat gun. Normally, I would pull out the heat gun and dry this. I'm not going to do it. It's very loud. Plus, we're in Texas. Would love to video uh, sit with you. Well, Susan, I'm not sure which town it's in. I'll get him to tell me, and then I'll send you an email through the class. <laughs> I kind of figured it would visit with me. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, that no seeing's back. Uh, yeah, I'd love to get with you. Um, I'm not sure what town it is in. It's where the National RV Training Institute is. And uh, when he gets through, he'll be a certified tech to work on this brand's rigs. And I told him, well, the last two times we had problems, it was over $200 to get it fixed. And I said, okay, I'm, I'm done with handing other people money. You need to learn how to fix it. Uh, the last excursion was we got ready to pull out from tap days and the slide wouldn't come in. And a bolt had fell out underneath the slide. <coughs> and it got hung up in the slide. So we had to call a tech out because we didn't know what was causing it. It didn't give no signals. And they had to pull the underbelly off to fix it. So he's learning. I mean, we've never owned an RV before. 
So yeah, it's a learning curve, but I got news for you. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the places we go, the things that we see. I mean, it's amazing. Right now, I am parked next to a river. At night, when I go to sleep, I hear the river flowing. And it's like a baby in a rocker. <coughs> I just fall asleep. No problem. Yeah, this cold's getting the better of me. I'm going to shoot myself here. All right. So, back to the decoupage. This we will let dry. Okay? The next thing that I want to show you is we'll go back to that one that I did yesterday so that I could show you how to trim it out and stuff. Now, when you're working with decoupage, take my advice. Wipe the lid of your Mod Podge off and use wax paper between the Mod Podge and the lid. <coughs> Reason being, it'll get all gummed up and you'll never get the lid open. Okay, I've thrown away bottles because of that. And I'm like, dummy. So, alright, now, close cutting scissors. Now, I've already trimmed out this side. What you want to do is come in right along beside this shuttle. I mean, right up on it and cut that fabric away. You see that? And we've got it trimmed all the way around. If you flip it over on the bottom side, you'll see there is no overhang. We got a little bit rougher. My eyes are watering. <laughs> I feel like I'm crying. I'm not. It, I told him I think this is a cold mixed with allergies, honestly. Okay. Anyway, you come back with your close cutting scissors. And you trim it. And you keep trimming it until it is flush against that. Reason being is you don't want any of this fabric hanging out. You don't want any paper hanging out. It is going to grab, okay, even with the glue and stuff. It will peel up. So you want to trim it as close as you can. Then you're going to come back with another coat of this Mod Podge right on top. <coughs> and you're going to do it the same way. You lay it on there. Okay? You see how I'm laying it on? <coughs> Lord have mercy. I haven't coughed all day. Let me get in here and teach class. I told you Murphy lives with me. <coughs> A gallon jug of tea sitting next to me, and I've done drank two of them. I've eaten cough drops to float a battleship on. And you think I'm crying all the time. Not. Okay. Now, let that dry. As soon as it's dry, you want to put a second coat on it. After you get your second coat, let that dry. Then you're going to come back with your varnish. I prefer two coats of varnish. Now, it's up to you. The reason I use two coats of varnish, we're working with our hands on a tool. With time, it will wear on the varnish, just like with wood furniture. You're moving a rocking chair, okay, and it's rocking on the floor. It's wearing that varnish off the rudders on the bottom of the rocker, right? Same thing with the tatting tools. So, I always put two coats, at least, of varnish. 
okay? And, you know, put three if you want. It's your tool. It's your work of art. Do what you want. Now, if you're going to paint, it's the same process. The decoupage, that means, let me switch back up here. That means if you're going to glue any of the stuff that I showed you in this box onto a tatting shuttle, you are going to need this stuff right here. <clears throat> yeah, we got a storm in the area. It's going to do that. We have the starlight. <coughs> It doesn't seem to be working very well because there's a pine tree that has a limb hanging in front of where the sunlight is. And with the storm, guess what? Yeah, it's a problem. <coughs> yeah, I'm not doing good. This just started. But it happens when the wind starts blowing. And like I said, I'm allergic to what's hanging over my house. So, anybody got any questions? I'm going to be Rudolph. Uh, the varnish. That's what I just showed. Varnish. Pam will send you <clears throat> the list. She sent it out on the 10th, Fred. Does she have your current address? There's that stupid no seeing. I want y'all to know, I got a bug zapper. Just for those no seeings. And this is what it looks like. Do you know this thing kills wasps? <laughs> best thing, best invention ever, I have to say. Um, but I sit here in the mornings and swat the no see -ums. and it'll go zap, 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 zap. So, yeah, it's, that's my toy, my fun toy. Um, but yeah, anytime you put anything on a shuttle, because it's plastic, you're going to need the Mod Podge. Get out of my face, or I will pull out the bug zapper, and they will see it in use. Okay, yeah, I talk to the bug. Um, because it's plastic, you're going to scuff it with your little nail files, okay? Once you're done scuffing it, you use your Mod Podge, put whatever it is. Y'all got trees coming down where you're at? I could really use for this pine tree to come down. She's not on my house. So. Any questions on how to use Mod Podge? That is how you decoupage your shuttles. Okay. Now, I showed you how to take apart the napkin and use it. Now, let's put, you all want me to put some fabric on a shuttle? We can do that. Or a sticker. Let's see. Let's put a fabric on. I got this pretty butterfly fabric. Hi, Pam. See this? Now, same. <coughs> same principle. I'm fixing to have to go take off, sir. I think. It's going to get to me. And I got a no see -up. All right, we're going to scuff it. 
Okay. He's going to make me mad. Go away. Just go away. I will catch you. You are mine. You're going to scuff it, scuff it, scuff it. Okay. Same deal. You got to get that shine off of them shuttles. Yes, I've used nail polish instead of varnish, but nail polish will chip off. You have to use the varnish on it to seal it. Varnish is the only thing you can use when it's something in heavy use. Come on, fly again. Where are you at? I see him. He keeps buzzing my face. Pam will tell you I was sitting here zapping him this morning when I was talking to her. <laughs> I don't know where they're coming from. I mean, I kill a dozen of them every day. It gets tiresome. Very tiresome. And they aggravate me because they want to get up in my face, and I don't like that. I don't even let my dogs get up in my face. All right, after you sand them, wipe your shuttle off and let it dry. Okay? And you don't have to do a lot of sanding. Just enough to scratch the surface and give it a place to bite. All right? Now, we're going to put fabric on this side so you can see how to adhere the fabric. And then on the next shuttle, we're going to do stickers. <coughs> if I don't cough myself to death, I swear, haven't coughed all week. Let me teach class, and I have to cough. Now, we're putting fabric on. Right, right. Okay, we're going to put... Let's see. How about that butterfly? What do y'all think? That butterfly on there? Don't you think that would be pretty? I do. So, let me switch to the down shot. So that you can watch what I'm doing. Because we're going to put fabric on. It's the same <coughs> principle. Okay? But, we have to use fabric scissors. We're going to cut our square. <coughs> Die here. <laughs> I got a head cold that's making up for lost time. Let's see. Looks like a good one. Here we go. It's right like that. What do you think? I think so. Now, something I have found that you can do, and it helps, especially if you've got fabric that's got really sharp <coughs> folds in it that have caused wrinkles and so forth. You can wet it with water, and it will help it adhere better and get the wrinkles out. So, you get your glue, just wipe it down there. Like I said, same principle. But you need to use Mod Podge. It doesn't matter what you're putting on your shuttle. You need to use the Mod Podge. Because it's plastic. You want it to hold to the plastic. And you see, you just lay it on there. And the fabric is easier to work with because you can smear it out using your hands. Like that. And then, get your wet wipe. Glue off your hands. These wipes here, I use a lot of the uh, Beacons 3-in-1. 
the Vapor-Tac. And that's the only one that will get that stuff off your hands. It's the only wipe I can find that would do that. Otherwise, I stand in there at the kitchen sink for an hour trying to get it off my hands. All right. And you see, I'm covering it up. Make sure it's coated really well. See? And it will absorb its cloth, especially cotton cloth. Now you can use polyester, you can use any kind of fabric you want, even that fuzzy stuff, you know? You know, some fuzzy shuttles, get you some fuzzy fabric. And you got fuzzy shoulders. Well, wouldn't those be neat to tap with? They would definitely defuzz your thread. Of course, you'd have to get a lint roller every time you used one. All right. Now, now that we've got that, that over there out of the way. We're going to let that dry. Once it's dry completely, then we go over it again with another coat of Mod Podge. You use as many coats of Mod Podge as you want. The required coats is two. One on top after you lay it down. It really doesn't affect the drying time because if you're not, if your house is air-conditioned. You don't have a humidity problem in the home like you do outside. I have a, a heat gun that I use, and <coughs> it will dry these in about two seconds, okay? But I can't pull out the heat gun, or you all won't be able to hear for about three days, okay? It's really loud. Okay, you have a dimple where the bobbin is. If you use a if you use paper or a napkin to decorate it, it will collapse over time. Uh, I'm really not sure what you could use that would hold in that spot unless you went into that spot in that dimple with... Um, resin and let the resin set up because then it would naturally fill. You might could try uh, clear nail polish and just build on that, you know, and then modge podge over the um, nail polish and everything. You could try that. But if it was me and it had a dimple, I would take and work the fabric or whatever you're going to cover it with down into the little dimple and work out from there. I mean, it's not going to hurt you to get Mod Podge on you. Bottom line is they charge you an arm and a leg for Mod Podge, and all it is is really thick Elmer's glue and water. Going to be honest, folks. Unless you're using a matte medium, that's what you're getting with Mod Podge. So... Needless to say, hi, Aurora. Long time no see. Hugs. All right, so now we know how to do fabric. We know how to do napkins. Now, same deal. We're going to do stickers now. Let's pull out. I'm going to just do some small stickers here. All right, I got these little dinky, but they are so cute. Let's get real. They are as dorbs. So, let's put some of these on which shuttle here? Oh, you're dead. I got you. Nothing to see them gone. I don't know. I, they're breeding somewhere. I swear to God, they're breeding. Oh, there's my shuttle. All right. Let's see. Which one do we want? I like 
feet here, this one and this one. We've got one here and one here. So those are the ones we want. And we're going to put them on this shuttle right here. Okay. Now we're not going to cover this shuttle. We're just going to put the stickers on. All we have to do is what? Lightly sand our shuttle. Give it a bite. Okay. Just come across it just like this. And I'm not kidding you. People do this. Get out of my face. There is another Noceum. I just killed one. I'm going to get me one of those bug zappers you hang up and just let it have a heyday back here. I don't know where they're coming from. I really don't. I wish I did. I would plug that hole real fast. All right. Anyway, what you got to do is you've got to sand and get the shiny off. After you get the shiny off, wipe our shuttle. And because this is a clover, it's got this little groove thing, right? Make sure you clean that real good. You definitely do not want to mod podge in that. All right. Now, this is not going to take near as much mod podge as the others. So you're going to dip it, wipe it off pretty good, pretty, pretty good. And then you're going to lay it right on there where you want these stickers to go. Okay. Remember, everything you put on it, because it's plastic, has to have this Mod Podge on there. And Mod Podge is just a very thick formulation of Elmer's glue. All right? I'm really going to try to die with this cough. I ser seriously am. Now, let's see. Which one do we want first? How about we use this one up here at the top? Now, I do have some nice little um, tweezers that I use in my crafts, but I don't have access to them right now because... I've still got stuff packed because we will be moving them. I just decided I wasn't going to unpack them this one any more than I needed. All right, once you get it on there, you place it in like you want it, and then you go for your next one. Okay, and our next sticker is going to be this blue and silver one. So we've got copper and we've got silver. They work together. And you just pull it down wherever you want it to go. You want them to be separated and balanced. Okay? Now you can get stickers that have sayings on them. Things like that. And it works. Okay? Now you want to let these sit to bite just a little bit, and then you're going to go over it with the light coat of Mod Podge. I used wax paper, Corinne, on the uh, Mod Podge, but I wiped the lip with my little wipes to get it off. This one I've tore a hole in, so I'll have to get some more. I keep a roll of wax paper. It's over here in a box right now. Um... But I've got some in the kitchen. I'll just get some out of the kitchen and put it on there before I close it up. Because I got a brand new bottle of Mod Podge. And I thought I had put the wax paper in there. And I didn't. And I went to open up the Mod Podge. Well, it wasn't budging. Husband got the uh, big heavy-duty pliers, you know, that you separate and put it on there, and we could not get that open. When that stuff dries, seriously, it sticks. I mean, I wish I had glue that stuck that good. <laughs> I mean, seriously. But, 
it has its own way of doing things. I'll be honest with you. All right, here we go. That's not wanting to lay down there, so may need some more glue on her. And if it does, just put it on there. And then you take, make sure you get under and over the top. Okay? Oops, we moved it. This one's just not going to cooperate. It has its own way of going to do it. And I have learned over the years, when something has a notion to go another way than I want it to go, let it go that way. Because if you don't, it's just going to peel up. I can always come back with a star or something like that pretty down in through there. But you see, the sky's the limit. I mean, seriously, the sky is the limit on what you do. Now, again, after all this is said and done and everything's dried, trimmed out, blah, 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 okay, varnish, varnish, at least two coats of varnish, nail polish, you varnish, the reason you varnish the nail polish, I keep flipping, there is another missing, oh my word, Okay, we got the varnish, you use two coats. We got the nail polish, okay? Nail polish, uh, when you use nail polish on these, remember, it's going to take several coats of nail polish. You can use glitter nail polish. You know the nail, uh, glitter nail polish with the big chunks of glitter in it? The ones that if you ever get it on your fingernails, you never get it off? I will tell you the trick on how to get it off. Okay, if you wrap your nails with a uh, cotton ball really heavily soaked in nail polish remover and then wrap that in tin foil and let it sit for about five minutes, it'll come off. Okay, but I'm not going to sit there and for five minutes and try to get it off my nails. I just think so, but I do buy it for shuttles and things like that. When you use it, okay, it is going to give it a bumpy texture, and some of that glitter will stick up, okay? So make sure you lightly, with a very fine grit nail file, and buff those sharp points off, or they will catch on your thread, okay? Then use your varnish. <coughs> this one here is a matte varnish. This one is a gloss. And this one here is a satin. Now, they do have a high gloss. And I was looking for my bottle of high gloss. It must still be in storage. Uh, the high gloss gives it a glass effect. Okay, it's that glossy, especially if you're using high gloss Mod Podge, high gloss nail polish, you add the high gloss varnish, and you got a mirror finish. I mean, it's that in depth. Okay, so play with your varnishes, play with the different things that you can put on your shuttles, have fun with them practice and do like everybody else make money for your hobby okay thread is getting expensive shuttles are getting expensive you know so why not decorate them up you can hand paint these i have seen some beautiful paintings on shuttles okay and you can hand paint these um i know you've seen at the beauty supply store, Walmart, they've got the nail kits where you can put the gold and silver lines on your nails and the 
stickers that have the uh, crystals and stuff. Hey, that's nothing more than an artificial nail. Go to town. Okay. And make yourself some money. All right. Have fun. Decorate your own shuttles. I mean, seriously. How fun is it to have a shuttle that looks like that? Okay? Or a shuttle that looks like this. You don't know how many times people have asked me, oh, where'd you get your shuttle? I made it. So you can have pretty shuttles without paying the price. All right? So, any questions? Any questions? I'm going to go buy some more Kleenex. I've only went through about 12 boxes so far. It is not COVID. It is a head cold. It's all right here. Right here. That's it. The coffin is because it's draining back. Yeah, I know. It's because where we're at, I have a tree limb that is right in front of the satellite dish. So every time the wind blows, because we've got storms in the area, we got wind. It's blowing it right in front of the satellite dish, which cuts off the satellite. Starlink is good. We do get fast speeds. Starlink is bad if you're around trees. Yes, yes, you're right, Silver. You, you, if you use glitter nail polish as part of the decoration, yes, you do cover it with the Mod Podge after it dries. And then you cover it with the sealer. Always use Mod Podge in there because the Mod Podge and the sealer work in tandem to give you a seal that you can't peel off. Okay? And whatever's in between those two, if you put Mod Podge, yeah, I know. OBS is reconnecting all this stuff. The tree moved. <clears throat> I think I live with Treebeard right now. Anybody know who Treebeard is? Lord of the Rings. Okay, do you put the fabric or napkin over the pick, or do you stop before? I don't understand what you're saying, Katia. You put the Mod Podge, and you put the fabric or the picture, the napkin, over your shuttle, wherever you want it to lay. And then you Mod Podge on top. And that seals that napkin or fabric into the Mod Podge. The sealant comes last. Just like this one. There's a layer of Mod Podge, a layer of fabric, and a layer of Mod Podge. This is almost dry. And where I'm at, it's high humidity. Yeah, it does make the pick thicker. Okay, you want it over the pick. I try not to cover the pick with anything but paper. Uh, the fabric, I don't cover the pick on the shuttle. Never do I use fabric over the pick. Paper is fine because it's thin enough. <coughs> I mean, look at this napkin, how thin it is. You can see daylight through that. Seriously, you see? how thin it is after we peeled it out it's very very thin so getting this on the hook it's not gonna hurt 
In fact, this one's on the hook. You see, it's on the hook on the back side. I didn't cover the front side because I didn't want it to hamper going to pull my thread. Right, Teresa, you're right. <clears throat> Did I answer your question? Yes, you do cope with Modge Podge. First thing you do, scuff the surface. Do your Modge Podge. <coughs> if you're going to paint nail polish or paint, you let the Mod Podge dry. Do your painting. Let that dry. Mod Podge. Then you seal. And I killed another one. I don't know where they're coming from. They're growing in here. Hubs is going to spray. I have to go in there when he does. Um... But that does that answer your question, Fred? Pam, Fred wants you to send her the list of supplies. Now, tomorrow, <clears throat> we're going to do the box Clooney Loom. I am going to turn this box, you see it, into a Clooney Loom. Yes, it's scrap. I was going to throw it in the trash. We're going to make a loom with it. <coughs> Anybody that has hand trouble, when doing Clooney's, it's painful. Okay? So, what you need to do is work with some kind of a loom. Sue's going to show you how to use the Clever Clooney Loom and discuss the loom that, I forget who it was, Sue knows, that made a Clooney Loom out of plastic canvas. And she's going to show you that on Thursday. I'm going to just show you how <clears throat> to um, make a box loom. Okay, because that I use a box loom. All right, Esther, can you repeat what you are doing tomorrow? Yes, we are making a Clooney box loom tomorrow. In case you don't know, this is a Clooney box loom. This is one Georgia made for me. Okay? And she doesn't make, she, Richard made it, actually. And they don't sell them anymore. But she made it for me because I was trying to learn how to do Clooney's. My hands won't hold the pose. For a Clooney for very long. So I went to Tap Days that year and this was waiting for me. I thought it was so sweet of her so that I could learn to do Clooney's. And uh, so, yeah, this is what we're going to make tomorrow. And we're going to make it out of this box. And you're sitting there going, how on earth are we going to make it out of this box? Watch and see. <coughs> if I don't die from this cough, would a cough kill you? I don't know. But I am going to take some cough syrup in a little bit. So, that said, any more questions? Pam has the list for tomorrow, and I will be showing you a couple of things you can do to <clears throat> help strengthen your box loom. But no, the one that we're making is not going to last forever because it's made with Dollar Store, Dollar Tree items. Okay, if you want to get into making the wooden ones, it's based on the same principle. Okay. So, there you go. Any more questions? And uh, I said, please. And they stuck me under this pine tree, and I've had this problem ever since. <coughs> so, 
hopefully this cough will be gone tomorrow. If it's not, I'm going to drown myself in cough syrup. So, any questions? Now, before you leave, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and let us know what you think of this. If it's valuable knowledge to you, let us know. If you've learned something, let us know. Okay? And we have monetized the classes. Now, what YouTube has done is they have given us super chats. They have given us super stickers and super thank yous. I have no idea what any of that stuff is. But apparently, in live classes, you can donate money for the classes if you choose to do that. The money goes to operate the classes and towards scholarship funding. Okay? There is no money for any of that right now in our funds. Palmettos has funding for scholarship as well. That is what the auctions are for. <clears throat> and, um, but for the operations of this class, it's all what YouTube pays us, okay? And they have just monetized this. So on the replay, you will see commercials, all right? And things like that. So let the commercials play. You don't have to pay anything to watch them. You don't have to click on them unless you want to. They're going to pay us regardless. Okay, but it will help offset the cost. <coughs> Be careful with your heat gun, Fred. You can melt your shuttle. Be careful. you got to hold it way up. Um, but we have been monetized. We have got enough likes. We've got enough subscribers and enough views to be able to monetize. And for you all to help do that, I thank you. I mean, it means a lot to me because I have been forking the money to keep these classes going since Georgia handed them to me two years ago. I don't begrudge that. I don't regret it. <coughs> don't regret it at all. Because I believe these classes are needed. I believe these classes need to stay free. Okay? So people like you can have fun and learn. There's so much meanness and chaos in the world. This is a good place to go to get away from it all. And enjoy what little time we're together. How much time the world has. So, with that said, make sure you click the like, thumbs up. Um, give us some good comments. Let us Give us some feedback. Also, we have a poll on the Facebook group <clears throat> when the classes return. We need to know, <clears throat> excuse me, what is a convenient time for you for these classes based on Eastern Standard Time or New York time? Let us know because that's going to determine what time we have the classes. Okay, so, <coughs> one more call. Good gracious, this has got to go away. Uh, until tomorrow, I wish you all the best night ever. I am so happy to be back. I want you all to have a wonderful evening, and I will see you tomorrow where we put a box loom together. Have a great night, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.